and ha what's going on everybody mortem here this time bringing you my rankings for the mythic paths in pathfinder wrath of the righteous now a couple things get out of the way at the start of the video here every single mythic path is very capable of being strong as long as you build with that in mind and know what you want to do with it basically so because of that ranking the mythic paths purely based on their power is a very difficult thing to do so that's not what we're doing. We are ranking these by how much I enjoy each one as well as story. Because again, I feel like ranking them by their power is ultimately kind of a futile choice. So instead, I thought it would be fun to go through and explain which ones were my favorites and the whys. Now, at the very bottom of the list, we have the Swarm That Walks. So Swarm That Walks is my least favorite for a few reasons, but for starters, the sheer difficulty of unlocking the path. You have to do a fairly long list of very specific things across the game to unlock the path at all. And in fact, given that I had the launch review copy that I then figured all this stuff out with and actually posted how to unlock it on launch day, I'm relatively certain that at the very least, I'm one of the first people to have figured it out. But that said, the reward for unlocking it is basically that you lose all your companions, you miss out on a bunch of story, but you get to be this awesome swarm that walks that is really powerful like all paths can be. But ultimately the trade-off here is that you don't get the rest of the story and you miss a ton of content, and while the path itself is cool, missing out on so much just to do it, it makes it kind of the blow it all up option and I'm personally just not wild about it. And then we have the legend mythic path. This one I don't like because it is the vanilla choice, like all of the other paths, very capable of being very strong. Being essentially able to be two level 20 classes at the same time is honestly kind of ridiculous. Coincidentally, I can't actually say this for sure, but I remember there being a bug in Kingmaker that would actually allow you to get multiple classes to level 20, and I'm, I can't help but wonder if that wasn't the inspiration for this even though I know the Mythic Path comes from the tabletop games, but the specific way it's executed kind of has me curious about that. Legend ranks so low because while you do get to do all the story, and in some ways becoming the Legend is the advisable choice in terms of the grand scheme of things, so to speak, personally it just feels very vanilla to me, hence it's low ranking. Then next up we have the Devil Mythic Path. The Devil Mythic Path is closer to the bottom here simply because it's real boring, which is to say mechanically it's pretty boring. It actually uses other Mythic Path features through Hell's Decrees and stuff. And while it's a very cool concept and I like that it's in the game, to me this was probably mechanically the most underwhelming. However, the story to get it is pretty cool, so I kind of give it some leeway, even though mechanically it's the least interesting in my opinion. And by the way, if you're curious about the mechanics of all these, I have videos of all of them up already. And then... We have the Angel Mythic Path. This one is a little lower on the rankings because I, generally speaking, don't like the goody two-shoes routes through games because, you know, I have to be a lawful good person in real life. I'm not really interested in role-playing as that in a game. The Angel, nonetheless, has some really cool powers that see you empowering your weapons, giving some buffs to your party and things, which, of course, makes them a strong Mythic Path, and that's not even accounting for if you decided to take their merged spellbook, which can get you some really cool spells. And it's kind of like the default good path through the game, so I think it's pretty neat nonetheless. And then next up, we have the Lich. So the Lich is kind of the middle of the road here. On one hand, I like that they let you become a lich because I can't think of a lot of games where that's really an option. So the fact that they let you do that and then you can raise bosses and other people you meet throughout the story into undead minions, I thought that was a really cool concept and seeing that in the video game is pretty awesome. But while cool, I just personally don't find the fantasy of being a lich particularly interesting, so despite having very strong mechanics as well as just honestly kind of a cool implementation in game, Personally, I just don't find it super interesting. And then at number five, we have the Trickster Mythic Path. So I like this one for the laughs, but that's about it. Very capable of being very strong if you build into it. However, the nature of being a trickster is basically just for the laughs, right? So in a game where the major plot is like super serious fighting demons and stuff, while I appreciate the comic relief for a playthrough or two here or there, and the mechanics for the trickster are probably the most unique, which is why it's a little higher on the list than some of the others. Ultimately, I do find the nonsense of it to be a bit of a detractor, which, to be fair, is the whole point of the mythic path, so here we are. Then at number four, we have the gold dragon. This one ranks so high because you get to be a dragon. <laughs> uh, mechanically, also very strong. You get a ton of stats. 
just a ton of boosts you can turn into a dragon, of course. And while it does require you to also be a goody two-shoes, which is why it's a little lower on the list, it is nonetheless very mechanically strong, and the fantasy of it is just super cool, because while there are spells and things that get to turn you into a dragon temporarily, this literally lets you become a gold dragon, which is really cool to me. Then in our third spot, we have the Aeon. Now, while the Aeon has some cool mechanics that are very good at making you tankier and kind of helping out your party in general. The main thing that sells me on the Aeon is the story. Story-wise, the Aeon feels very cool because you get to influence some events that are talked about directly in the game. And while all of the Mythic Paths have pretty cool stories, the Aeons really stood out to me and I really enjoyed it a lot. And then in our number two spot, we have the Demon. Now, the Demon is the number two spot because it is my gut instinct first pick. I think the mechanics are fun. I think turning into a demon is really cool. And as I mentioned, I like to roleplay characters that are not literally what I am in real life. And being an evil, callous demon is about as opposite of me as it could really get. And because I like to play evil characters in games, demon is kind of what my gut instinct tells me to pick first. And I think it's just really cool mechanically with all of the demon forms you get to turn into, taking on aspects of demons and things. Just a very cool, robust mythic path. And then for our number one spot, that leaves, of course, the Azada. Now, this one is honestly kind of frustrating because, as you might imagine, Chaotic Good is one of those alignments that I don't really pick in my personal playthroughs. But Azada is at the top of this list because it is ridiculous. So you get Ivu, which is your pet like fairy dragon thing, which is an insane party member, especially later in the game when she grows to full size. On top of that, you get all of these ridiculous superpowers as an Azada, one of which being life bonding friendship lets you share teamwork feats with your entire team without having to give anyone teamwork feats. And it's like a permanent thing. So that is absolutely ridiculous. Azada are just so strong mechanically on top of the fact that Ivu is adorable to the point where this mythic path, despite being an alignment I don't even like, and honestly the story being a little goofy, still managed to rank number one for me because it's amazing. It's one of those things where like, I want to hate it, but it's so good I can't. And thus, it kind of had to be number one on this list. There you go, guys. There is my rankings for the Mythic Paths in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I hope you enjoyed the video. By all means, let me know your personal rankings down below. I'm always interested to hear that kind of thing. and I do read the comments. So if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of it, truly, especially if you're listening to this, thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.